Christ. He is our sacrifice for sins. In the New Testament, you have the priest who is Jesus. He ascended to a tabernacle in heaven. So in the New Testament, we're not looking at a earthly sacrifice. We are not looking at an earthly priesthood. We're not looking at an earthly temple. The whole point of the book of Hebrews is there's something better. Something better than an earthly sacrifice. Something better than a earthly priesthood. Something better than an earthly temple. You see, the devil gets us looking in the wrong place, friend. It gets us looking at Jerusalem, an earthly piece of geography, rather than heaven in the heavenly temple. It gets us looking at an earthly priesthood, the earthly priesthood of Judaism, rather than the heavenly priesthood of Jesus. It gets us looking at some, at some antichrist who supposedly is going to go in the Jewish temple and make a sacrifice. No, friend. We're looking at the sacrifice of Christ. We're looking at the heavenly temple. We're looking at a conflict over the soul and the mind and the heart of men and women. We're looking at the big eternal issues in the great controversy. See, these are the issues. Hebrews chapter 10. And notice what the Bible says in Hebrews 10 verse 19. Therefore, brothers, having boldness or confidence to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he's consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. When Christ died on the cross, the temple veil split in two in that old temple. The Shekinah glory was gone and the temple was left desolate. We look now not to an earthly tabernacle in Jerusalem, but we look to heaven, where Jesus Christ, our sacrifice, is ascended to us, where Jesus applies the blood of the sacrifice on the cross for the law that we have broken. And he says, this man, this woman is pardoned, they are forgiven. We're looking not to an earthly temple, not to an earthly sacrifice. We're looking to heaven. The Bible says in Hebrews 8, and verse 1. Now this is the main point of the things that we're saying. We have such a high priest who's seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. We have a high priest. Who is that high priest that we have? His name is Jesus. And where is this Jesus now? He's in the heavens. He's ascended from earth to heaven. He is there in heaven's tabernacle. He is there in heaven's sanctuary. He's there for us. And this Christ is his arms wide open for you and me. We are not looking to an earthly piece of geography. We are looking at Jesus in the heavens. Now let me continue in the text. It says, now this is the main point of the things that we're saying. We have a high priest who's seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary of the true tabernacle that the Lord pitched and not man. Where is the true sanctuary that the Lord pitched and not man? That true sanctuary is in heaven. And who is there? Jesus is there. And what does Jesus invite us to do? Hebrews 7 and verse 25. For such a high priest was fitting or rather, Hebrews 7, 25, and then 26. I read 26, but we'll go back to 25. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he lives to make intercession for them. Our eyes are not fixed on some antichrist in Jerusalem, in a local temple, offering a sacrifice of a pig to defile the temple. Our eyes are fixed on a heavenly temple. Our eyes are fixed on the blood of the cross. Our eyes are fixed on the blood of the atonement. Our eyes are fixed on the blood of pardon. Our eyes are fixed on the blood of forgiveness. Our eyes are fixed on the blood of reconciliation. Our eyes are fixed not in an earthly temple and an antichrist. Our eyes are fixed on the true Christ in heaven. The Bible says, therefore he's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. You can come Come and kneel. Come in your imagination. See Jesus in heaven's sanctuary. Come in your imagination. See him there before the love of God with blood running down his wrists. The Bible says that John looked up into heaven and he saw there a bloody lamb. And it's the Bible says, look here in Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Millions have come and you can come. He is there to make intercession for you. Revelation 4. Revelation 5. 
Revelation 4 says, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The door is open in heaven. It's open for you, and it's open for me. Revelation 5, verse 1, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. This is the scroll of judgment. This is the scroll that records the life of every human being. This is the scroll that records the sins of every human being. This is the scroll that records every idle word, every curse word, every lying word, every exaggerated word, every word of criticism. This is the scroll that records your entire life. The Bible says, Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. And I wept much because nobody was found worthy to open it. If nobody can open the scroll, then you're lost and I'm lost. There is no hope for salvation. And the Bible says, But one of the elders said to me, Don't weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll. And I looked and beheld in the midst of the throne and four living creatures in the midst of the elders. There stood a lamb as he had been slain. Oh, get your eyes off some conflict in Jerusalem. The conflict is bigger than Jerusalem. It's between good and evil. It's between Christ and Satan. It is for your soul. And there is a lamb who stands in the sanctuary above. The Christ that died on the cross. And his blood was shed for you. And you can be saved. When the judgment comes, your name is written in God's eternal book of life. Focus your attention on heaven's sanctuary. Focus your attention on heaven's lamb. Focus your attention on heaven's priest. We continue in the book of Hebrews. You see what Satan wants to do? He wants to cheapen the gospel. You see what Satan wants to do? He wants to get us looking at earth rather than heaven. He wants to get us looking at man rather than Jesus. He wants us to getting us looking at the Antichrist rather than the Christ. Hebrews 7 says, Therefore he's able to save to the uttermost those who come through him, since he ever lives to make intercession for them. Jesus has never lost a case. He's living to make intercession for you. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. He makes intercession for you. There's no sin too great for him to forgive. There's no blot in your life too great or too dark for him to pardon. His mercy is yours. His forgiveness is yours. And his power is yours. And he can transform your life. When we look to heaven's sanctuary, we see heaven's sacrifice in Jesus. We see heaven's priest in Jesus. Jesus is the lamb that died and Jesus is the priest that, we, that lived. But as we look up in heaven's sanctuary, we see something else. Revelation chapter 11. You see today, the temple that is, has been restored is the temple in heaven. The temple in heaven has been restored. Jesus Christ, our high priest, offered up his sacrifice outside the sanctuary of heaven on earth in the court. He has ascended to heaven as our, high pri as our priest. He now is in the final phase of his priestly ministry called a work of judgment. Today the whole world is to gather and come to heaven's sanctuary to accept heaven's sacrifice, to accept heaven's priest, and to open our heart in these days of judgment to be sure that our life is right with God and ask him to write his law in our heart so he can change us and make us over again. Here you have it. Revelation 11, the Bible says, The nations were angry. That's our day, isn't it? And your wrath has come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. This is the last days, the time of the dead that they should be judged. And it says that your servant should re reward, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those that fear your name, small and great, and should destroy them that destroy the earth. Christ is coming to destroy the destroyers. He's coming to destroy the earth. And the Bible says the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in the temple. This is the restoration of truth. This is the rebuilding of the temple. The temple of God is open where? Up in heaven. And what is there? The Ark of the Covenant. And what's in the Ark of the Covenant? The law of God. So the Bible teaches in the last days that the direction of men and women would be focused on heaven. 
We would see there Jesus as our sacrifice. We'd see there Jesus as our priest. We'd see the temple of God opened in heaven. We'd see the Ark of the Covenant open. We'd see the law of God. The devil wants us to look at an earthly temple. He wants us to look at Jerusalem. He wants us to get the idea that some temple is going to be built there and some Antichrist is going to be occupying that temple. The truth of the matter is the controversy is in the universe. It's between good and evil. And Satan has tried to change the very law of God. Satan has changed the Sabbath and he said that it was Sunday. And God would have his people looking to the heavenly tabernacle where Jesus is, where he is there pardoning us from sin, where he is there interceding for us, where his law is enshrined, where he wants to write that law in our heart and in our mind. This is the controversy between good and evil. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, what is, or chapter 8. What is God's great goal in these last days? Hebrews 8. Verse 8 and 9. It is not that the Antichrist is going to make a covenant with the Jews. It's that God wants to make a covenant with us. Hebrews 8. The Bible says, Behold, the days are coming, verse 8, when I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And who's the house of Israel? Spiritual Jews. All believers in Christ were Abraham's seed, the church. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Verse 10. This is the covenant that I'll make. I'll put my law in their mind and I'll write it in their heart and I'll be their God and they'll be my people. Oh, my brother and my sister, focus your attention on Jesus. Kneel before the heavenly sanctuary. See the Lamb of God pardoning your sins. Watch as the blood flows from his hands and his head and his side. See the cost for your salvation. Give yourself away to this Christ before heaven's tabernacle and open your mind to him in this judgment hour, in these last days of earth's history, and say, God, write your law in my mind and write it in your heart, my heart. You know what the difference is? When God writes his law in our mind, he writes it in our heart. When he writes it in our mind, we know it. When he writes it in our heart, we love it. Say, oh Lord, teach me your law. Teach me what you want to do. I want to walk in your way. And Lord, write your law in my heart so I love it. Lord, teach me obedience. Lord, help me to love to obey. The great controversy between good and evil is a panoramic controversy. And in these last days of verse history, God's final message of judgment is going forward to the ends of the earth. The angel is holding the hourglass of time right now. And the sands in that hourglass of time are indeed running out. Christ himself is coming back. And Jesus says to you, and he says to me right now, Come, you blessed of my Father. He extends his hands to us. Will you come to him right now? Will you give your life to him right now? Will you ask him to come into your heart and your life right now? Will you say, Jesus, you're my sacrifice in heaven. You're my high priest in heaven. Write your law in my heart, Lord. All I want is to obey you and follow you. Will, that, will you make that your prayers, we pray? Oh, Jesus, we come to you right now. And we thank you that you are everything that we need. In Christ's name, amen.